I have this little wall-mounted dust collector. It has a small canister filter on it, which was an upgrade from the original cloth bag. Here's an interesting exercise to test your cloth filter bags. Turn off the overhead lights and put a bright light right next to the bag. Suck up some sawdust and see what happens. Can you see why they call these cloth filter bags dust pumps? It collects the chips, but the dangerous fine dust is pumped right out at head level where it's easy to breathe. That's why I like pleated canister filters. But these little canisters that go with these small dust collectors aren't big enough in my opinion. Because when I turn it on, I can see that the bag on the bottom wants to blow right off. That tells me there isn't enough air escaping through the pleats in the filter. I like big canister filters with a lot of surface area so tons of air can flow through the system, giving me every bit of suction power my blower is capable of. I also want finer filtration than these little stock filters usually provide. This is a nano filter with a MERV 15 rating, which means it'll stop particles less than a third of the size that the stock filter lets out, and far smaller than what the old bag filters expel. And it offers many more square feet of surface area through which clean air may escape. This upgrade should make my little blower run to its full potential. But how do I attach the upgraded canister filter to my compact blower when there's no built-in flange or adapter? We're gonna make an adapter with some chunks of plywood, two shelf brackets, and a four inch duct collar from a home center. If you wanna get really fancy, you can even make the filter unscrewable with a five gallon pail and a gamma seal lid. In this video, I'll demonstrate both methods. Let's start with the plywood. Two pieces are 18 inches by 18 inches. Two pieces are four inches by 17 and a quarter. One is four inches by 18 inches, and the last one is five and a half by 18 inches. In the center of one of the large squares, I cut a hole to fit my four inch duct collar fitting which is secured with some screws and sealed with silicone. Don't forget to seal the metal seam. In the center of the other large square, I cut an eight inch hole. Then I begin assembling the box sides upon it. The 18 inch long piece goes on the back edge and the two 17 and a quarter inch long pieces go along the sides while the remaining large panel goes on top with its four inch collar pointing upward. Be sure to use glue so you'll get a good bond that'll be airtight. I recommend nails only to hold the glue parts together as they dry. Now I have a box with an open front, which will close later. Find a location to mount your box on the wall. Remember, you'll need room beneath for a three foot filter plus a collection bag. So I suggest mounting your brackets about five feet above the floor, depending on the size of the collection bag you intend to use. You'll see what I mean later. I made my box wide enough for my brackets to go onto wall studs, which are usually spaced every 16 inches. Make sure the inner edges of the brackets are at least 14 and a half inches apart if you plan on mounting a flanged filter rather than using the screw-on filter mounting method. Now, what is the difference between those two? Let me show you the flanged method first because I think it's the simplest way to mount a filter. Then we'll show the screw-on method. This is a Win Environmental 13F 230 nano filter. It features a heavy steel flange at the top end and a pre-attached gasket around the rim. I'll leave a link to it below this video. Mounting this is as simple as drilling four holes through the flange, centering the filter over the large hole in your box, and driving in four screws to secure it. You don't have to drive it down that hard so that you pancake the gasket. Just apply enough pressure to seal. Now you can move on to the next part of the installation. But wait, first, I wanna show you the other method. This is a 13R230 nano filter, which is the same as the 13F230 nano, except there's no flange at the top. I'm guessing that's why this one is 13R for round, the other one is 13F for flange. We're going to use a gamma seal lid to make this filter twist on and off our box so it's easy to remove for cleaning. Gamma seal lids are not the same as those generic five gallon pail screw lids that you find at a lot of home centers. A gamma seal lid has two cross members, while the other lids have a single cross member. It's important to use the two cross member version for reasons you'll soon see. I'll link to a source for true gamma seal lids below this video. Snap the lid on your pail, it may need some persuasion. 
Then unscrew the center part and set it aside. Pull off the handle, you don't need it. Then cut off the pail an inch or so below the ribs. I just let my jigsaw run against that lower rib as I cut. What remains of the pail must be attached to our box, which means that that eight inch hole has to be made larger. So center the pail over the original hole and trace it with the pencil. I like a fat lead for this because the sides of the pail are tapered. So the hole needs to be a bit larger than the ragged end that you're tracing. Cut it out carefully, making it nice and round, and hopefully the pail fits well without a lot of extra space. Don't worry if it's imperfectly sized, that's what silicone is for. But you do want it nice and round so that when you drive in screws to secure it, you don't deform the pail and mess up your threads. Put the box on the brackets and secure that with screws as well. Now back to that center portion of the lid. The middle must be cut out along the dotted line that you see here. The easiest way to do this is to drill a pair of half inch holes in the underside where each cross member ends. Then you use a jigsaw to remove the rest. Note how the ribs are all left intact. This is important. Make your lid look like mine. The remains of the lid fit nicely on the gasket of the flangeless filter. To secure it there, we'll use what are called FGL6 latches. Wynn supplies these with both of the filters that I showed you earlier, and they also sell them on their website. They're smaller versions of the larger latches that we used in a different video to mount a filter to our larger dust collector. One end of the latch hooks on the inner rim of the filter, and the other end hooks on the rib in the notch at the end of one of those cross members. Now you see why we needed a true gamma seal lid with two cross members. This gives us four notches for the four latches. Don't over tighten them. You don't want to deform your plastic rim. Now the filter will screw on and off your box, making it easier to clean. In fact, you could take it outside the shop and blow it out with a leaf blower if you wanted to. You don't have to remove the filter to clean it. But if you have a cramped shop, you may find it more convenient. We have a video about cleaning filters, which I'll link to below. So how do you attach your blower to the box? That depends on the blower itself. If it has a four inch outlet, you merely run a hose from the blower to the collar on top of your box. My blower presented a bit of a challenge because my outlet was slightly larger than five inches. I purchased a five inch to four inch adapter at a home center, but it wouldn't fit over my blower's outlet because the end was flared. My solution was to notch the adapter and stretch it over the outlet. I used a mallet to then form the steel over the lip on the flared end. Then I wrapped it in four layers of good foil tape. Foil tape lasts longer in dusty environments than regular duct tape. And the result was plenty rigid for my uses. Remember, this is the blower outlet, not the inlet where the suction hose attaches. This connection is not going to be stressed after it's mounted on the wall. We aren't finished yet. The final five and a half by 18 inch piece of plywood covers the open side of the box. I applied some thin weather stripping around the edges and four screws hold it in place. This makes it possible to open it back up and clean the box out if I ever need to. Finally, a collection bag must be attached to the bottom of the filter. Before I installed it, I brushed contact cement around the rim and let it fully dry. This will really help prevent slippage. Then I combined three large hose clamps together to make a belt to hold the bag in place. I'm using some four mil poly bags that I got from Wynn because they're just the right size and they fit the filters really well. You may use any heavy duty bag you wish, but keep in mind the length of the bag will determine how high the filter must be mounted from the floor. You may need to raise everything up if you want a larger bag and you might run out of ceiling space. If you do use a large bag, I recommend letting the bottom rest on something just in case it gets too heavy and pulls the bag off your filter. Notice how the bag isn't blowing up like a balloon and ready to pop off? That's because this upgraded filter is large enough to let all that air escape through the pleats so it's not restricting your airflow. And remember that flashlight test we did at the beginning? It's only fair to do it again with a proper canister filter. My dust collector not only runs better, but it's no longer a dangerous fine dust pump either. Many of these modifications may also apply to larger systems, and we've made other dust collection tutorials, which I'll link to below. See you next time.